Hello, and welcome back to another episode of The Monster Inside. We are now going to do Chapter 2, The Park. The scene was already picked clean by the cops days ago, but I've got a knack for finding the things others overlook. A knack, more of a symptom of condition. Other, less useful symptoms I kept in check, but for the time being, my keen sense of smell would come in handy. It was faint, but I could smell it before I even approached the police line. The scene was less of a thing and more of an emotion. A strangely familiar smell. I expected the scene of trepidation or even outright fear, but Mrs. Farnsworth seemed to have been at the height of pleasure when she left this world. It brought new meaning to a crime of passion. Pushing the thought from my mind, it was time to get down to business. Investigate the scene. Oh. Muddy footprints everywhere. Difficult to pick out anything from the prints the cops left behind in their haste. But the cops don't wear 2,000 pairs of car car carpenos? It looks like Mr. Farnsworth was there that night and walked away on his own two feet. Oh, some scratches. A burn mark on the nearby tree caught my eye. I ran my finger along its length and it felt a chill down my spine. It wasn't just any burn mark. This was the mark of an ancient magic. It's doubtful the cops would have picked up on it. Could Lily have been right? Something unnatural was at play here. But I was no stranger to the strange. After looking around for a while longer, I realized the park had given up all that it was hiding from me, so I trudged back to my apartment and the head of my pillow like it owed me money. What? Okay, well that was a very short chapter, so we're going to do the third chapter as well. The next morning, I was reeled from another bout of ghoulish nightmares, but I tried to hide my discomfort when I saw Lily was already sitting outside my office. She waited wordlessly as I unlocked the door and ripped down another notice from the mayor's office. I motioned for her to step inside, seemingly afraid of what I might say. She finally worked up the courage to ask. So, what did you find? Might be right to worry about monsters. Found a spell's mark. What does that mean? What about Reggie? Do you know where he might be? Found his footprints. Seems like he got out safely. My tone was indifferent towards her as I turned and grabbed a bottle from my desk drawer. A dryness in my throat made it difficult to swallow my meds. But you don't know where he went. Do you think the news this morning is related? What news is that? Haven't you heard? Nope. A rough night followed by a rough morning. They found the police chief's wife dead by the docks. They say it happened last night. Let me guess. Chief Amato is missing too. My face might have betrayed a hint of satisfaction as she confirmed my suspicions. But it faded quickly. Amato was a crappy cop and a crappy chief. He was half the reason I left the force, but now his wife is dead, and I had more questions than I did the day before. The gears in my head started to spin, which was which wasn't helped by the splitting splitting pain at my temples. I told Lily I need time to work, and she left sightedly dejected, wanting more answers than I could provide. That night after the cops had cleared out the docks, I would slip down to see what I could uncover concerning Miss Amato's untimely demise. Next chapter. We are not going to do the next chapter. We are going to save that. 
And until next time, stay nerdy.